Hi, I'm Lawrence Mann, and these are some big mistakes made by beginner artists. Stay tuned. Not spending long enough on the initial sketch. Now, yeah, you kind of want to rush into the painting in general you know you kind of want to rush into the the actual coloring the fine detail of it and unless you get the actual pencil work right then you just going to end up rushing the anatomy of it all and the the actual finished piece is going to look really squiffy so don't not spending long enough on the entire painting now i've heard a lot of young beginner artists saying, wow, this took me ages, I spent like four days on this, it was crippling, oh, it's like four days on a painting, um, yeah, I've, I've spent like two, three weeks on a painting, sometimes a couple of months, um, you know, the great masters, uh, I'm sorry, it's really sunny now, um, the great masters spent years, years on a painting, you know, like their entire lives on certain paintings, really four days you're kidding yourselves make sure that you zoom in and zoom out in other words get close to your canvas and make sure that you step away from your canvas in equal measure that goes for both digital artists and non-digital artists as well let's face it I see far too many beginner artists not doing this and it really shows in in your art yeah it's pretty clear that there's either not enough detail or there's so much detail and again going back to the idea that the initial sketch wasn't really good enough yeah so make sure that you're getting really close and backing away don't rely on custom brushes from Photoshop or ones you've downloaded for Photoshop. Believe me, they won't impress anyone other than your friends or people on DeviantArt. It's just not really that cool anymore. You know, it hasn't been for a few years. And yeah, it's that simple really. Um, custom brushes do help out now and again on things like scales for dragons and little bits and bats, but ultimately, you know, you can't use them on every painting and it's just that simple. Stick to good painting. If you can afford it, get yourself a Wacom Cintiq or another tablet with a screen built in. The difference is amazing between that and a normal digital drawing tablet. Really, it will make a massive difference to your art being able to draw directly onto the screen. I'm not lying. It is a real jump into your workflow and the speed at which you will be able to complete an art piece. Try it, it is amazing. Nom, 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 nom. There's a lot of advice out there for young artists that says don't use true black, stay away from it. Now, it kind of makes sense in some cases and it kind of doesn't. Um, it's a bit difficult to make sense of this one for a lot of people and it can be difficult because if you stay away from true blacks then you'll end up with a very flat painting that just kind of lacks substance and distance and yeah you kind you need true black in your painting for it to have depth it's that simple <sighs> things that are close to you will have true black things that are further away from you as you can see now don't have true blacks in them it's that simple you know it all works you can see now true blacks in the shadows here uh, it's a contrast issue you know if there was a bright light shining at me why the sun depending on the intensity of it you may not use true blacks it depends on your style of course obviously etc 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 so you'll hear from a lot of people don't use true blacks but you know, depends what you're painting. I would say, yes, use true blacks. Don't be afraid of them. Go ahead, be silly. But I see a lot of flat paintings with no depth coming out because people have taken the advice, 
not to use true blacks. Apparently, famous comic book artist Jim Lee was turned down by Marvel the first time round because his hands weren't good enough. Yeah, can you believe that? Jim Lee, like king of the comic book artists. Well, apparently that's true. I read it online and I saw the rejection letter. I think so anyway. Um, yeah, it could have been made up. Not by me at least. But, so, make sure you get your anatomy right. This is a big thing by um, beginner artists. So, yeah, anatomy. Who knew, right? <laughs> That's one of the biggest things anyway. A lot of artists only seem to use one brush in the beginning for some odd reason. And it seems to be this dull, fuzzy, kind of large brush. I'm not sure why exactly, but there you go. Um, so use more brushes. Experiment with the brushes and play around with them. You know, whatever program you're using in, use more brushes. Use the best software that you can afford. I know that a lot of people use things like GIMP and other free software, but let's face it, the better and the sooner you get trained in something like Photoshop, the better because it's got more tools. You don't want to get really good at something like GIMP or some other free software. And then once you start getting more and more professional, you have to learn how to use things like Photoshop. You are eventually going to want to use things like Photoshop. Why? Because it has more in it, more tools to use. And eventually when you start using that, you'll become faster and better at using it and your paintings will become better. And yeah, it's just that simple. That's why it's the industry standard. Things like Painter and Photoshop, you know, it's that simple. So if you can afford it, use it. And to be honest, it doesn't cost that much. Really, you know, ask for it for a Christmas present. Um, get a discount any way you can. You know, Photoshop is a monthly pay. <sighs> I can't really say much more than that. Uh. Thinking that the best technology will somehow make your art better. Uh, no, there are still some of the best artists in the world drawing on the worst tablet they can get their hands on. Yeah, I prefer the best tablets and technology going, but that's because I'm a technophile. So yeah, make sure that your drawing is better than your tech. It's that simple. Are you backing up your work enough? Apparently, a lot of beginner eyes are not backing up their work enough. Who knows? Um, but yeah, apparently this is a big mistake made by beginner eyes that a lot of you are not backing up your work, making multiple backups, keeping them on multiple drives. <sighs> I'm still a bit iffy on this one. Mine is a bit spotty, but I do have multiple drives of my finished work or backed up, especially client work. But yeah, work that I'm actually currently working on. Meh. But make sure you do it, make sure you back up your work. And as you're working on it, you should have multiple copies, you know. Yeah. For me, one of my personal bugbears is when beginner artists put little paint dabs on the artwork. You know, oh, this was the two or three different skin tones that I used in my painting. It's just like, do we really need to see that? I can see that on the face. You know, I don't, it doesn't look professional, it doesn't look cool. It, it was done kind of in the 90s and for some reason some artists have decided to continue that on now. It's done more in anime and manga circles and I think stylistically, you know, yeah. Artists who would think they're done learning, but are not, obviously. Um, I'm not done learning. A lot of artists aren't done learning. No artist is ever done learning. But for some reason, some artists seem to think they are done learning. <sighs> I don't know what it is. You're never done learning. Picasso, for instance, when he became an old gentleman, started a crazy style of painting that made him the famous man he is today. Now, he, in his younger years, painted more like one of the old masters that we all know and love. I'm not a fan of his new style, but the reason he started painting like that was because he was exploring art. Now, that's what I encourage each and every one of you to do, but for some reason, a lot of younger artists seem to think they have stopped learning because they know absolutely everything. Uh -uh. 
wrong. Learn to handle criticism. Um, a lot of artists just starting out can't handle criticism, don't want to show off artwork to anyone they know, any of their peers. Putting it on deviant art is not asking for criticism, especially not when you can delete a comment that you don't like. By asking for criticism, I mean showing it off to artists that are your superiors, by showing it off to critics who know what they're talking about, um, by showing it off to valued members of the art world, so to speak. People who may want to buy your art, people who know about anatomy, yeah. Go and seek real critique of your work. And don't be upset when people actually give you criticisms that you don't like. In fact, if anything, you should seek out criticisms that you don't like. The worst thing in the world anybody can say about your artwork is, it's great, I love it. Your best friend is not a critic. Believe me. That's why it's called a critique. You want people to say negative things about your work so that you, as an artist, can grow. So, if you're a beginner artist, there's some of the things that you might be doing wrong or some of the pitfalls to avoid. Hopefully, that's helped you out a bit. If you know any other beginner artist mistakes or you've got any tips for beginner artists, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully, this has answered some questions for you. If you have any more questions, then record them in a video, drop me a link, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Tune in for more videos. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, as always. And I shall see you really, really soon. Check out the other videos on my channel. Yeah, cool. I shall see you very, very, very soon, my friends. Until then, keep on drawing. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and even subscribe to my channel, Lawrence Can Draw. And if you really did like what you saw here, you can see more of it at my website, lawrenceman.co.uk. I'll see you next time. And for anyone interested, this was shot on an iPhone 5 with an Oliop lens and a SmartLav from Rode.